In this watercolour demo, I'm going to be painting this street scene in the town, city of Quetzalan in Mexico. As we can see with this um, shop sign here, Quetzalan, looking towards, I believe the church is called San Fra the Church of San Francisco, if I got that right. Uh, so street scene, I'll describe it to you very shortly, but thanks very much to Larry an artist friend of mine on Patreon for the kind sharing of his source photo. My name is Tim Wilmot, watercolour painter and demonstrator. So welcome to this video where I go through step by step this demonstration of this street scene. So we are looking down, slightly down, downhill, I reckon. Things to be aware of, the placement of the church. Well, first of all, um, this photograph is sort of squarish in dimensions. I'm going to go landscape and orientation, which you'll see shortly. Um, we've got some perspective to contend with. Uh, we've got um, these, these sharp lines here, here, street level. So I'm trying to think, as regards the horizontal where are they? Where are those angles in relation to that line? Or maybe from a vertical, if I could draw it right, from a vertical. Um, what's the kind of relationship of that angle to that vertical or horizontal? Uh, this line here is almost vertical, all right? And then obviously as we go um, further, as we go lower down to street level, whoops, <laughs> they're going a little bit more um horizontal all right and then we've got the edge of the pavement there uh placement of the church it's we don't want to have that too much in the center of the picture so thinking about the placement of different objects trying to simplify the scene as well lots of complicated um shop uh produce and paraphernalia and, and souvenirs, I guess, um, outside of these shots, particularly on the left there. Values. So, quite dark on the left-hand side, very light. Very light, actually, down here, this building catching the light um, in front of the church and some of these buildings on the right-hand side. Now that light, so I reckon the sun is coming from the left and possibly, well, hitting this building on the right-hand side and then bouncing down the street. So we've got this little bit of a shine on the street and the quirky, all these pebbles um, have been well trodden on and they're nice and shiny. So we've got the, the actual shininess of the these cobblestones and then also the the joints in between them as well the randomness of of all of those lines but not we don't want to go overboard on that otherwise it would detract from the overall overall scene we want to keep try and keep it try and keep it simple if have you seen any of my other demonstrations I'm a fairly loose impressionistic uh, painter trying to capture the scene in an hour or two. So in this demo, I'm going to go through the complete painting process with you. From here, um, just going through my thought process on the source subject and, and how I'm going to handle that and things I might move around and uh, um, things that caught my eye, why, what attracted me to this, um, this scene in the first place. And then I'll go into the drawing uh, and all the various um, steps of a watercolour painting from laying down a wash and some other techniques along the way. So hope you enjoy it and let's get started. First step then, drawing and I've lost my mechanical pencil on this one. Um, my trusty um my normal faber castell faber castell that i that i use anyway i've got an ordinary pencil for this one an hb pencil and 
just drawing in the outline of the main shapes. There's that vertical overhanging roof. And the most important thing really is to get the perspective right. And then I'm just following those lines. I don't necessarily need to draw in all of the shadow shapes, but really it's the, the, the key areas of the street, the, um, the levels of the buildings, down to the street level here, right and left. And a little bit of the pavement. These are the balconies in the first floor on the left side. Shop blind there. Come across the street and then the pavement on the right hand side down into that bottom right corner. Um, the bottom of the building about there and there's some kind of uh, covering on just, just above the street level. This is the sign. Some artisan shop in in Quetzalan. Now figures. I'm not copying the figures in the photograph. I'm just making up my own. And uh, that gives me a chance obviously to place them maybe a little bit better for the composition for the balance of the scene. But having them some near, some far. Of course, with the perspective, we're looking down, down the road a little bit. There's a slight gradient going, but we're looking down here a little bit. So these figures, the uh, the heights of the the heads of the figures, they they would just be a little bit lower the, the further down the street we go, and that should give us the. Uh, the sense of the gradient there. Just strengthen up that line, which is quite important, and the the overhanging roof on the left hand side. A few little details. The um, the openings of the uh, the shop on the left. I've done the the uh, the church tower, drawn that really um, simply, briefly, uh, because I don't want too much detail for that church. It's got to be kept nice and simple because it's in the background. Don't want uh, don't be too fussy with it. And now for the painting. So if I uh, well let me. Uh, cover off the paper first of all. So it's Saunders Waterford and the texture is not NOT or cold press and it's 300 grams in weight or 140 pounds, 15 inches by 11 inches at quarter, quarter imperial. The brush I'm using is a, a Jackson's Squirrel mop. Uh, but it, it could be any any mop brush really, and getting in that sky. It's not the sky's not too deep a blue, but it's lighter as we come down towards the horizon. And I've painted a, a little bit carefully around the tower because I do want to keep the church tower quite bright. 
with a little bit of yellow in it. Not sure what the what the significance of the yellow tower is, but um, maybe somebody could uh, could um, pop in something in the comments what the uh, the yellow top of the the church tower signifies. But I'm now continuing on um, after the sky sky going over the buildings and really covering up the whole page except for those areas that are going to be kept quite bright where the sunlight is hitting the the white buildings now i'm detecting quite a i'm not sure if this is correct in the photograph but to me i see a lot of rosy tints lots of warm tints in this um, photograph maybe from the sort of deep terracotta red of some of the uh, some of the um, fascias on the on the buildings at uh, street level, and then the, um, the the street, the cobblestones, they're quite uh, they're quite rosy um, themselves. A little bit of cool in there, tiny bit of blue, I think, in some of the cobblestones. But I'm, I'm now really covering up the whole paper just to give it that base layer, which, because it's watercolour and we, we're laying on, we're, we're painting down separate layers, this will show through a little bit on on um, subsequent layers I, I paint. So I've got to get that um, sort of right. Now, on the right-hand side, yes, it is white paint. It is that the sun is hitting that bright white building, but I detect just a little bit of um, a tint in the, uh, in the building on the right-hand side. So I've just put, put in a very light layer there of that sort of rosy-ish um, colour. Now, I should uh, go through my colors which never really changes the uh the paints i've got from the top are neutral tint then i've got burnt umber burnt sienna there just stabbed that one and yellow ochre viridian green cobalt green cerulean blue and cerulean blue and cobalt blue which i use for the sky then there's ultramarine blue, Amazon crimson, Windsor red. So that's ultramarine blue there. Bit of burnt umber. Uh, right colours. <laughs> um, Windsor red, light red, cadmium orange, lemon yellow, and just along the bottom in the middle is a lavender, which is one of my favorite colors at the moment. It's really nice when you mix it with uh, burnt sienna, I find. So it's sort of an op opaque-ish um, color. Now, while the that this first wash is still damp, I'm now adding in some darker, thicker color into particularly into this street level where where it's a little bit darker and I want to get a bit of a soft glow around the the cobbled street where the sunlight is coming down it's reflecting off some of the buildings here and we've got a bit of a a lighter patch in the middle and I'll get a, a soft edge around that so Adding this darker, thicker colour here. Could be anything, but keeping it fairly warm. Burnt sienna. And this soft brush, doing this with a soft brush doesn't, uh, doesn't damage the surface. So it's not going to move things around and uh, um, alter that, that uh, initial surface. Likewise in the top, I can now Add a bit more in here following on what I've said about this 
rosyish uh, tint. Um, just add in a, a bit of aloes and crimson in there. Keep down, keep going down. And notice the brush strokes or the brush directions. I'm not um, laying down the paint in nice little neat um, horizontal horizontal rows. I just uh, really um, just uh, particularly on the on the on the uh, pavement, trying to put in a little little sort of marks to denote some of the uh, some of the, the cobblestones tiny little brush marks and that um, because the surface is quite damp they're just going to diffuse out and melt out into the surrounding area and give me a, a soft edge To, now I could leave the painting at this stage. The board is on a slight slope of about 10 degrees or so. Because of um, filming, I, um, I have to have it fairly flat. So it's, it's not going to travel too much, this paint. The thing with watercolour, particularly at this stage, is that uh, it's, it's moving around and especially if you've got good quality watercolor paper and there's a significant there's a there's a significant amount of moisture it's going to when you put the paint down on a wet surface it's going to move around a little bit so i could just leave it and i will get an even softer edge but um being a little bit impatient i've reached for the hair dryer and just speed up the drying process because the next step, everything has to be very dry so I can get some sharp edges. And when you dry, when watercolour dries, of course, as you know, those watercolour painters out there, um, it goes a little bit lighter so you've got to on that first wash stage sometimes you've got to go just a little bit darker now the top of this church tower the church of san francisco i believe being in the background little um, dash of yellow there on the top of the tower and below that there are a, a, it's a little bit of Darks. Now I'm not sure what sort of architecture this is, whether it's, I'm not sure whether it's Baroque or Renaissance architecture. Um, maybe it's, maybe it's Renaissance, but uh, a little bit of darkness below that yellow, but not too precise, keeping it fairly loose. Bit of shadow down the right hand side, the lights coming from the left. Angle of, um, below the Below the tower, a little bit of an angle of the roof. And now darker. I'm observing the shape of my brush. When I pick up a little bit of paint like that, I'm looking at the brush. You, you, you sort of get a, uh, a second sense. You intuitively know when you pick up the paint if you're using the same brush time and time again. You know just how much paint is on that brush and you you then can sense when that brush touches the paper what's going to happen is is the paint going to suddenly go out all over the paper or is it going to be a little bit resistant and reluctant to come out come out of the brush and go onto the paper if there's not a lot of water there so um but, but I, I do sometimes just observe the brush and particularly with these mop brushes that hold a lot of um, hold a lot of uh, paint you can look at them that look at the body of the the actual brush and you can see how much uh, paint's going to be there now this is a medium 
mop brush now from this is from Windsor and Newton and it's a size 4 it's about 10 millimeters in diameter quite an important hard edge here against the sky the uh, the dark overhanging roof there is a little bit of a red stripe going down going down the, the middle of this overhang I'm, I'm not I don't think I'm going to bother with that uh, I think it would just be it would draw the attention of the viewer up at the top of the the um the top of that roof I think it's just in the photograph it's too bright a red to me it looks like it's just been painted uh, I'm not sure what what that red does but it, for me I'm I'm leaving it out now with the same brush and some careful lines here I didn't actually I should really have drawn in these windows um, these top um, little doorways here that lead out onto their balconies I should really have um, drawn those to be absolutely sure but with the same brush not too much water on the brush some almost dry brush marks and now with the balconies um, as we go down the street the, the the vertical railings of those balconies they're they're closer together almost a solid shape and then right down the bottom it goes um i'm not sure if it's a sign or some sort of screen down there but uh, that that kind of like a bit of a full stop to the end of the sentence that um that that line that uh, screen there at the end just to mention a couple of other activities i i get involved with apart from youtube um and those people on patreon ignore this but uh if you want to join a little um a small but active watercolor community then take a look at patreon.com slash tim wilmot you might have heard of patreon with other creators but it's quite a popular platform for creators to share uh different types of content richer content that's not possible on the youtube system and uh on Patreon, we, we do regular projects and critiques, and there's a community where we can share our paintings and images. So it's quite a quite a, an active group to help us all improve our watercolor painting. Um, so pop up there, and, and I do from time to time do some live streams up there that are exclusive um, up on up on uh, patreon and you get to see youtube videos without any ads as well um and a, an earlier release so check out patreon and then the other one is um separate to patreon i do from, from time to time at the moment on a on a normally a monthly basis i do online watercolor workshops where every month i choose a different theme and uh, people from all over the world join me for a, a live paint along session. Again, I do a, a group video that you would have seen up on my channel. Some of the uh, attendee paintings from that uh, to share that with the watercolor community out there. Anyway, back to the painting. I've gone a little bit darker down there in that middle ground. Dark at the end of the... Um, well, it's not the end of the street uh, that middle area the shadow a dark shadow going across the street there's some dark uh, door openings of some shops down there so I've I've gone pretty dark on that again with the same brush you can with with a brush that's got a good edge to it and a good point you, it's, it can be quite flexible and versa, versatile to um, attempt most of the painting now below the balconies there there is some it's like a sort of 
plinth or support to the balcony, which is what I've just done there. Now we have the shop blind that's got some brownish stripes to it. Of course, with perspective, those stripes get a little bit closer together and narrower to, to the end. Some sort of dark logo or emblem to the left of the shop and then these dark openings. Paint's going to dry lighter so it, it might appear quite dark here at the moment but it will dry a little bit lighter. And I'm not drawing in a perfect rectangle for these shop openings. I'm just leaving some gaps here and there to be a little bit more vague over what's going on. Um, and uh, maybe painting around some figures. Sometimes objects appear when, when I do this with um, street level details. You suddenly can see an opportunity to introduce a figure that wasn't there beforehand. You know, you might just sense there's a head or a shoulder or a body um, and you can you can make something out of them at this stage in the painting, even, you know, even you hadn't in intentionally drawn them in the first place. And uh, just these little um, things sometimes uh, appear randomly. Um, but I'm, I'm actually... The, the figures are going to be dark figures, but I've still, I don't know why I do it, but I still paint around them. I could paint over them. I guess it's because I'm, I'm afraid of losing the outline of those figures if I went over them with these dark shapes. So just to play on the safe side, I've uh, painted around the figures. Now, some of these cobbles are quite dark so I'm not sure they're very attractive those these um these cobbles they're certainly a, a lot bigger than than we get in the UK which um they tend to be quite small that are the cobbles in our streets but these are almost like dinner plate size and um very shiny of course because of the they must be hundreds of years old. Right. With, so with the same mop brush, the figures. I find uh, the, the mop brush, without too much paint on it and with a good edge, you can create some fairly convincing figures. I tend to mix all my darks up that top. I've got three main mixing areas on the palette and I tend to mix the darks on that on that top bit and then the cools generally in the middle section where my Holbein palette has now got a slightly sort of rusty bit in the middle, that brown splodge, do you see it right in the middle? Um, I don't think it's uh, mixing or contaminating the paint. It doesn't seem to anyway, and I don't mind. Um, so as long as I've still got a majority of white, I've had this palette about 10 years. So as long as um, it uh, doesn't get any worse, I'll uh, stick with this palette. Now, main figure, maybe this one, is looking into the shop, maybe having a conversation with the shop owner, who knows, um, but facing that way. 
maybe that figure could face the other way, looking into the composition, but then I'd be thinking, well, why is that figure on the left-hand side looking over to the right? Uh, anyway, I've done it now. Right-hand side, a strong, dark, overhanging roof on that side. And not being too precise with the edges, it's uh, not too much, not too much water on the brush getting a bit of a, a deckled edge to that shadow. And then a slightly lighter shadow for, it looks like the, the bottom of a balcony, possibly, um, what, I'm, what I'm painting in now. I'm painting around another balcony here and there's a few little gaps in the front of the balcony. I'm not sure exactly what the the um the pattern is of that of those little gaps but uh just painting a few loose vertical marks. Now that below this balcony there's a slightly darker shadow quite dark in of course on the the bottom of the base of the balcony then it's a little bit lighter coming down towards the edge where I'm at where I'm where I'm at now Alison Crimson, Windsor Red, and another shadow. So I'm, I'm going quite warm on this shadow. As I said earlier, uh, detecting quite a lot of warmth. Maybe that shadow in the top right corner. Uh, I went cool with that one. I'm not sure why, but um, this one definitely I'm going warmer. Painted around the orange sign um, underneath some structure to a, to a balcony further down the street to the right to the uh, above the uh, the orange sign and just bring it down a little bit there's some uh, wrought iron gates or something um, up this side of the street now, the uh, bottom of the buildings on the street level, they've got this sort of bright red colour to them, a band, a band of this quite deep red colour. A bit of a hard edge between that and the, um, the lighter front of the building. For the orange sign, the art, artisan, I'm trying to read what it says, artisanos lin, lindo quetzalan. I, I assume it's just some kind of artisan's shop. So a bright orange sign. I'll get a shadow going across that when that's dry, when this sign is dry. I've not with um, street signs, with uh, shop signs, I don't actually, I generally don't write in exactly what the sign says, but I give the impression of some words or some letters in there or a logo or something like that. So that's what I've done there by painting in that orange and just very gently... Um, leaving a little bit of paper showing through, which could be that shop logo.
Now with a smaller brush, a round synthetic brush, I can start putting in a few details. First of all, under that terracotta roof there in the middle, in the middle area. It's a bit of a weird roof that it sort of just comes out straight away. I'm not, not sure from the photograph how it's supported, but it, it overhangs quite a lot. And there's a dark shadow below that. Tiny bit of detail on the other side of the street. The, the, the further I go down that street, I need to be very careful keeping it nice and light and not too dark otherwise it will it might bring that object a little bit too far forwards strengthen up some of these these uh, balcony windows or um, doorways likewise strengthen up some of the, the balconies And the uh, the base of the balconies. A few horizontals on that screen or whatever it is, a sign that's maybe maybe it is a sign that's facing the other way. And Some darks below the blind on the uh, on the street level, just to strengthen up the base of the building and the edge of the pavement. Not a continuous line, just a few little gaps here and there. I think um, looking at the photograph, maybe there's a, a ramp or something like that, perhaps for. Um, shop traders to um, wheel their trucks onto the pavement perhaps. Now these cobblestones, between the cobblestones we've got a little bit of mortar or the, these, um, these darker lines. Now I don't want to paint all of them in but just to give a, a tiny hint of the these random little uh, darker gaps between the cobblestones and generally some lines some stronger lines leading us down down the street so yes there are some horizontal lines going across the street but we want to maybe we want some stronger ones like this one here going a little bit da further down the street not too dark and I'm looking at the photograph for a little bit of inspiration here but trying to think these these stones they're all sorts of different sizes and um, butting up against each other Windows down the bottom strengthen up that line of that building, which is, I don't think that building, the light building at the bottom of the street is part of the church. I think it's in front of the church. And I'll just continue on. I'll, I'll, keep, I'll keep coming back to the street, doing more and more lines as I 
do a little bit and then um, stand back and do a quick little review to myself. Um, think whether I need any more lines in there. Some thick, some thin. Just using any kind of colour that's in the palette. Doesn't really... I mean, it is a sort of... Uh, a muddy reddish brown, I guess, most of these lines, but um, it, uh, it, some of them are, are quite dark in the bottom left corner where, you know, it'd be different types of mortar or dirt in there. So just vary the, um, vary the intensity of this colour. This, this brush used to have a very good point on it, but I've used it for many years now and it's lost its point. It's almost become like a very small flat brush, which is quite handy. Well, once you get used to how a brush handles, you can actually make it do a number of different brush marks. And I, I, I find it quite good, you know, where, where I'm doing the, the gutter there, um, just applying a bit more pressure on that brush and the, the hairs, the hairs um, splay out a bit and go a bit wider. So I can keep, keep using that same brush. I don't want to put too much detail on the left-hand side. I want the, the main focus to be the eye hitting that lighter patch and then going down the street. A distant, distant figure, just a, the head, the head height a little bit lower because we're looking down the street. Um, could be a little bit lighter this one actually. I've gone a bit too dark on that one. Could be another figure there, not sure. So check my brush. On the on the palette there's a thumb hole cover on that top uh, mixing palette. I sometimes do mix some like I'm like I'm just going over it now, I mix some really dark darks um, on that. Some of these marks are more solid than others and there's not much moisture on the brush now. Um, so we, we're getting a, a lighter, a lighter line. And there's, there's some moisture in some of the, the pans as well. Um, which I'm just uh, picking up there. Whatever's whatever's in that pan, I'll pick it up. Even a a dollop of pure pure ultramarine blue. Right, pavement. A few. I think there's cobbles on the on the pavement, but I'm. I'm going for a fairly simple traditional um, uh, level pavement there. So I've just put in a few darker lines. And then on, on the right hand side, there's these window openings with wrought iron gates or coverings to them. So I'll just... Uh, now I want to keep this right hand side fairly light. The sun's coming in here. If I go quite dark, if I go a bit too fussy with this, these wrought iron works, like on the, on the right hand side, there's a very dark opening just where I am now. I'm going to, I'm going to keep it quite light just to um, emphasize this bright light coming in. 
create maybe a hint of something, uh, some sort of doorway opening there. But not, not a big dark mark. It would just be... It would, it, the, I, think, I think also it would um, lead your, your attention too much onto that right side. Now, I am going to make the bottom of this doorway opening a little bit darker. Because the, um, the shadow from the left-hand building is just, uh, that's the top of that shadow there. So make it a little bit darker. Now for the shadow going across the sign, check my brush. Make sure my hand doesn't smudge that, <laughs> that bottom of the doorway that I've just done. Uh, and carefully create that angle. Sort of uh, 45 degrees. Um, that shadow angle and just uh, connect it to a little bit of the, the wall behind where there's a... Uh, I think actually just to the right of the sign, there's a little bit of a top of the top of the doorway. So just continue that that shadow on down there. Some darker edges to the um, the ones in that bottom left corner connect up with the figure. Keep mixing. It's at this stage of the painting, which I call the detail stage, where I'm just adding in, as I say, some more details, but I'm, I'm really going around to all the, all the parts of the painting and maybe just touching up areas and strengthening lines, correcting things if I can. Like that little, that little corner there um, in the photograph, you can just sense there's a slightly soft, darker line that's where the, the corner is. Maybe a few more lines here just to create more of a, an idea of a doorway there. The church, being very careful not to make it too detailed or too dark. Because re really this painting is about the street scene. It's not necessarily about the church. The church might be a focal point in the painting and our eye goes down it but because it's in the distance because it's got that brightness against a bright sky you could if you looked at this scene for just a few seconds you might miss that tower totally so i don't want to um make it too strong Bit of a, a border or a frame around the orange sign. Just makes that stand out a little bit more as a sign. 
in the top right corner of that sign as well. If I've, if I think I've gone in a little bit too dark, I might just quickly use my fingertips to lift off or smudge the paint a little bit. Not too much, otherwise you can um, you can ruin the effect of the freshness of watercolour if I if I smudged it too much. So in that in that bottom right corner, just to create create the the feeling of that um, raw tie work, I've done a few crisscross lines there. Not sure on, on the where the pavement just has a little kink in it and it um, turns as some kind of um, stone or um, boulder or some, <laughs> something like that. Not sure if it's something to do with the drainage. Um, but I've, I've put that in there anyway. Right, this brush is really dry now. Not much paint on it at all. So it's leaving very light lines. Bit more darks in those doorways, windows. They probably are like French windows or something like that. I'd imagine you, you could come out onto those little balconies or balconettes or whatever they, they're called. Um, there's a little cable going across the street. So same brush. Could have used a rigger actually if I'd have thought about it. But with the, um, the flat edge of that brush, I can get quite a thin line with that. I'm now going to highlight some of these uh, figures with a little bit of white paint, which I, I know some people might frown on this, but I use it a little bit just to, and I know quite a few people do, um, just to strengthen up pure white paint, fairly thick. This is white gouache um, with a rigger brush. Uh, just to, yeah, that's a figure there. I've, I've put a little bit of uh, highlight on the head and the shoulders. And sometimes the, the quicker you do this, the more fresh it looks. If you think about it too much and go over with the white paint too much, you just can overdo it. Maybe a bit more writing on that sign. They're not, they're not proper letters. They're just gibberish. Um, few more whiter and lighter areas where the um, the sun is just catching the shiny raw tine work. Perhaps just a few little dots on the balconies there. And we're done and we'll uh, we'll go into a summary now. As I normally do, just a little review, mainly for my own benefit, just to uh, give myself like a little bit of a critique, if you like. Think about what I was trying to do. Did I did I achieve my my aims, my objective of the painting and the the light and the composition and so on. So sunny a sunny street scene in Quetzaland, Mexico. Um, thanks very much again for Larry, 
my Patreon artist friend Larry for the kind sharing of his photograph. And we're looking down the street, thinking about the gradient, down the street to the church of... That's quite loose, isn't it? <laughs> that church of San Francisco, I think it is. And we've we've got souvenir shops left and right, a few people in the street. A main feature of the street are the cobblestones and the shiny nature of those cobblestones. So I've kept that area quite light and a soft edge where it's darker as well around the edges. Possibly I could have put in a little bit of a... With these figures here, I could have put in a little bit of a, a reflection, possibly. If we imagine there was some reflection here, soft reflection. And maybe that other figure there. That might just enhance the, the feeling of um, the reflection a bit, as if it was like a, a, wet, a wet surface, if you like. Um, that could have helped. But anyway, I've, I've done it now. Um, what's done is done. But quite happy with the figures, the placement of those. We've, we've got, looking at the heights of the figures, so that's the tallest figure. Then we're looking downhill. Um, maybe some repeated um, flesh tones in the over on the left hand side there trying to think also did I keep it fresh did I keep it loose I think I have maybe well that's a figure there could have strengthened up that figure a little bit but on the whole quite happy with it um, the the uh, the perspective as well that sort of all hangs together we've we've got the I think I got the angles pretty good or good enough on the left hand side that that angle there um, and then almost vertical for that overhang that one there but then as we as I explained on the opening we've we've got um, these lines gradually like that do you see we're 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 paying homage to the uh, perspective, perspective of the scene. I'm trying to think about that. Um, the sign, keep it simple. No writing in there at all, but it sort of looks like a shop sign. And the the details at the end with a smaller brush, the, the mortar work, the um, little gaps between the cobblestones and tiny bits of uh, architectural details and a little bit of white paint at the end. Well, I hope you like that. Um, catch up with me on the next video. Check out the, if you're not on Patreon, check out Patreon. There's lots of other artists up there as well. And check out my workshops on crowdcast.io slash Tim Wilmot for um, up and coming, up and coming workshops. Thanks for watching. Catch up with you next time.